Hi, I'm Otmar, and I'm working on a new project. Uh, I'm a longtime uh, Volkswagen camper nut, and I also like electric vehicles, and I've decided to combine the two together and uh, make a project that I'm calling the Stretchla. The Stretchla, because I'm starting with a stretched Volkswagen banding and camper that I've been using for about 12 years for camping. And the LA is part of a Tesla. This Tesla Model S that I'm sitting in is going to become the donor for the components to make this whole system run. Uh, I'm planning to use pretty much everything out of the Tesla, everything from the dashboard to the drive system to the charging uh, and all that sort of stuff. So um, this Tesla though has had, its, has had a bit of a rough life, right? It's, uh, it's been in a major accident. Uh, I got it half off, the front half was what was off, and uh, so that made it a lot less expensive, but it still needs some work just to get it running at all. Been having a little trouble just trying to get the wheels to turn, and uh, after a few days of looking around and poking at electrical things, we discovered the battery pack isn't even plugged in. So apparently the body shop that worked on it taped over the connections and put the battery pack back in place. The, uh, the connections for this are on top of the battery pack. So in order to reconnect it, we're going to have to drop the battery pack, inspect it, make sure it's in good shape, clean it all up, and put it back in. So that's our goal for today. And uh, my friend Debbie is here, and she's going to help me try to drop it. And we'll see how it goes. That was fun. The uh, battery packs out of the Model S. Thanks to uh, Debbie who came over and donated her afternoon to help remove the battery pack. We've uh, pulled it out, set it on a table here, and uh, I've realized that there's a few other things I want to do while the pack's out, so I won't be putting it right back in. Uh, there's some damaged brake lines, and this is the perfect time to replace those. Uh, a couple things I didn't review before. Uh, lifting the Model S is a bit of a challenge because the lifting pads are relatively small. And so here I'll show you some images of what I did to my bend pack lift pads just to ensure that the car wouldn't slide off of the pads when it was lifted and uh, wouldn't want that happening and uh, still provide clearance for the battery pack to slide out in between. So the lifting pads have to be out near the edges uh, to allow clearance in the middle for the battery pack to come down. And of course I was worried that these pads might slide away, you know, the, the lift feet might slide out and you certainly don't want a car coming down on you. So Tesla has these wonderful holes in their jack points that allow you to put a pin on your jack and locate that to the car so that there's much more security. So I'll put up these photos here where you can see how I've uh, drilled and tapped into the lift pad and put in a, a bolt with a, a nut as a spacer to keep anything from sliding around. The other major concern I have for safety is that this battery pack weighs quite a bit. I don't know exactly how much, but it's probably somewhere around 1,200 to 1,400 pounds, and uh, you certainly don't want that coming down on you. I uh, took one of our welding tables, and uh, thanks to Arthur's help, we upgraded the wheels to some heavier duty wheels that should take the load, but once we actually got the battery pack on there, I was getting nervous. And as you saw in the video there, we rolled a couple of extra toolboxes with 600 pound capacity each under the sides as an extra safety just in case something were to start to fall or anything like that. Luckily we didn't need them uh, but we're leaving them in place and I hope that before I do this a second time I'll have made a more 
sturdy, wider structure to hold the pack in place. Uh, basically, it was removing about 34 bolts off the bottom, uh, setting the whole car on the lift, on the rolling cart for the battery, and then we just lift the car off the battery uh, to remove it. And then inspection time, so there's a bunch of gravel in there from when it was uh, traveling across the country. And uh, the brake lines, like I said before, that were damaged in the accident, I need to replace those. So that's the next step. And then once those are fixed, uh, I hope to put the battery pack back in and try it out, see if the wheels will turn. So uh, we'll continue on. All right, next step here. Um, we've spent, uh, I've spent a number of hours now looking around. Uh, it gets kind of interesting trying to diagnose a vehicle with no wiring diagram and no service manual. And uh, so you, you end up spending a lot of time with a voltmeter and ohm meter and poking around and musing. And luckily I do have a description of the various fuses and where they go. Uh, one of the I, I may not have mentioned yet, I hooked the battery back up, put it back in, and the car still wouldn't go. It came up with some more dire warnings, like uh, pull over safely, and the usual contact Tesla service, which I get a lot of those on my error messages. Um, so uh, not wanting to find out what the hourly rate is at my local Tesla service center, I just kept plugging along and diagnosing and figuring out what I could find. Hit a bit of a breakthrough, I discovered that the pyrotechnic disconnect that I thought only was for the SRS system to keep it safe and turned off, that it also kills power to the main contactor, which will make the vehicle go at all. So uh, with that reconnected, I push on the brakes and the car wakes up and uh, the dire warning to pull over safely has gone away. Uh, matter of fact, we're down to uh, merely seven major errors on the center screen. And uh, with my foot on the brake, I'll put it in drive. The parking brake lets go and the wheels are turning. So a uh, little bit of success today, which uh, feels good. Had me worried about the, uh, the condition of the battery or the whole system. Oh yeah. The wheels don't stop very well because uh, the brakes don't have any fluid in their lines. They were sheared in the accident. Uh, eventually, there we go, the brake will hit, the parking brake. So what else? Um, yeah, feels good. The battery is seems to be in very good shape. It's been sitting for a number of months and it's still at about 68% capacity. It's showing 180 miles remaining range. I haven't tried plugging in the charger yet, but that's next. And uh, yeah, I feel like a good step's been made here and uh, the, the car's one step closer to, uh, to being drivable. Now that the wheels are spinning, that's very exciting. There's one last thing to check, and that is to see how the charging system works. Uh, this vehicle, as you may know, had a little bit of damage on the side um, making it impossible to plug the car in while the charge port is installed. So I've temporarily removed the port and uh, mounted it here. Well, not even mounted, it's just hanging out on the inside. Um, it's pretty well insulated, but just in case we've got gloves and glasses, you know, in case any high voltage events, highly unlikely, but could happen. So here we go, we have our mobile connector. Push the button. Let go, and our charge port pops open, as you can see, and we're ready to plug in. And the moment of truth, we have a green light. That's fantastic. And you can see on the dash, I think, hopefully it'll be charging. We'll see. 39 amps, 240 volt system. It's, uh, it's taken a charge. Thanks for watching. This is, I think, the end of this video update, and uh, I'll report back when there's some more progress.